the Word of God. Today we are going to talk about the power to be delivered. The power to be delivered. Come with me in your Bible to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17. The power to be delivered. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 20, verse 17. It's on the screen. Father, we lift up your word. You are the deliverer. And you have released power for deliverance. Father, that we will understand that power. How to apply the power. How to wait on the power. And how to exercise that power. Father, we thank you. We thank you that upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and holiness. And we, the seed of Jacob, we shall possess our possession. We thank you for your word. Father, let your word, as it enters, let it bring light and understanding unto us. Father, let your word activate faith in us. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by your word. We thank you for your word. Your word is the bread of life. We thank you, Lord. For we know man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of your mouth, let your word proceed forth with power. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles 20, verse 17. God is speaking to his people as they face adversity, as they face challenges, as they go into battle. And let us see what God is saying. He says to them, you shall not need to fight in this battle. You are not going to fight in this battle. That does not mean fall asleep and fold your arms. That does not mean just sleep. The fact that you're not going to fight does not mean you're, you're going to fall asleep and just relax and fold your arms. He says you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves. Set yourselves means get ready, be prepared. Prepare yourselves. If I'm not going to fight in the battle, then what am I preparing myself for? God, you said I don't need to fight in this battle. Then why are you telling me to get prepared? He says, set yourselves. Stand ye still. You're not going to fight in this battle. Prepare. Stand still. Stand still does not mean this. That's what it means. Stand still means in the spirit. Don't go running from pillar to post. Don't panic. Don't be in panic mode because of the battle. Don't be anxious because of the battle. Don't be afraid. Stand still. Relax. Stand, standing still in the spirit is a position in Christ. Where you are unmoved. You're like that tree planted by the rivers of water. Unshakable. Unmovable. So he says you're not going to fight in this battle. There is a battle. But he says you're not going to fight in the battle. So he says be prepared. Lord, be prepared for what? Then he says, stand ye still. Because if you begin to panic because of the battle, what that communicates is that you don't trust God. If you begin to panic because of the battle, you give the enemy ammunition to attack you. He says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord with you. That see means experience. And experience the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem. And then he says, fear not, nor be dismayed, nor be discouraged. Don't be afraid, do not be discouraged. Why? Because the battle is fierce. Because the strong man is fierce. Because Goliath death in his armor can discourage you. If Goliath is to appear, you may be discouraged. Don't laugh at the Israeli army when they did face Goliath. All of them were afraid. They were dismayed. Because it is not easy to stand before Goliath. So the Lord says, you will experience the salvation of the Lord. Do not be afraid of the battle. Do not be dismayed. In the battle, the enemy will tell you you are going to lose everything. In the battle, the enemy will tell you that you are going to come out penniless. In the battle, the enemy will tell you there is no way for you. 
God says, don't be discouraged and don't be afraid of what the enemy is doing. Just stand still. The enemy will send a letter in the mail and say, I'm going to seize all your property. God said, don't be running from pillar to post. Stand still. Standing still is a position of trust in the Lord. When you run Elkan Skelter, you don't communicate that you trust God. And he says, don't be dismayed. Tomorrow, go out against them. Everybody say, tomorrow. tomorrow. Go out against them. How can they go out against them if you said, I don't need to fight in this battle? God, you said, I don't need to fight in this battle. Yet you said, tomorrow I should go out against them. For the Lord will be with you. So what the Lord is telling you is that in this battle, you're not going to fight in your own strength. You are going to go out against them. When you go out against them, you will not be the one fighting. It will be the Lord fighting through you. When you fight the strong man, it's not you. It's not your battle. It's the Lord fighting that strong man through you. So when the Lord says, go out against them, what the Lord is saying is that you must confront the enemy, but not with your power. You're confronting the enemy with my own power. Does somebody get that? Yes. So this does not give you leverage to just fold your arms, sit down, and say, oh, the Lord is going to fight my battle. I just need to relax. I'm going to have a jolly good merry time. No. The Lord is going to fight your battle, but he's going to use you to fight the battle. He's going to pump his power into you and fight that battle through you. So that when you get to the arena against the strong man, and you give the strong man one punch in the spirit, the strong man will say, oh, that can be her. That's not her strength. Where did she get that strength from? Because she's not the one fighting the strong man. It's God fighting that strong man through her. And that's why God said, I will come and live inside you. I will be inside you. So that when the battle begins, because I'm inside you, I'll be the one fighting through you. So he tells them, you will experience the salvation of the Lord. But you cannot experience the salvation if you don't fight. How would you experience the salvation if you don't go out against them? Until you go out against them, you cannot see the salvation of the Lord. Because the enemy's function is to hinder you from being delivered. The enemy wants to keep you perpetually in his snare. It's like if you see somebody that is fighting the spirit of addiction. That spirit of addiction wants that person to report to him for the rest of his life. And for that person to break loose, he has to go out against that spirit of addiction in the name of the Lord. In the power of the Lord. So God tells them, you don't have to fight this battle yourself. I am the one going to fight for you. All I need you to do is position yourself. Do what I tell you to do. So, he tells them, prepare. You don't fight battle without preparation. Set yourself. You see, when you don't prepare for a battle, it becomes easy to be afraid, to panic, to be discouraged, because of the lack of preparation. It's like if you don't prepare for a test, for an exam, on the day of the test, you start to fret. Why are you fretting? Because you did not study. But if you have studied and you studied and you restudied on the day of the exam, you won't fret. You will go with confidence. You go with confidence. So that's why it tells them, be prepared. Set yourselves. So on the day of battle, you will not look back. And then it says, stand ye still. Stand in him. And then you will experience the salvation of the Lord. Many times we are not experiencing deliverance because we have not prepared ourselves. He says, set yourself. We must prepare ourselves. You want to see the salvation of the Lord? Set yourself. Prepare yourself. How do you prepare yourself? Repentance. Prayer. All that good stuff. 
So there is a battle that is going on. And in this battle, you want to see the salvation of the Lord. In this battle, you want to experience and walk in the salvation of the Lord. The salvation of the Lord means victory. This is a battle. It's either you have victory or you have defeats. And God is promising them salvation, victory. Now, this is not really where we are going to today. We are using this as a stepping stone to go somewhere else in the New Testament. So we are using this as a foundation. Because we are going to experience different kinds of battle, different kinds of warfare, and the Bible says, set yourself, be prepared, stand ye still. Now, once upon a time, you see, it's possible to be in Christ, follow Jesus, obey Jesus all the way, and still be in trouble. In fact, those that follow Jesus are the ones that get in trouble the most. So when battles of life come, and you're following Jesus, and nothing seems to be happening, what do you do? Let us go in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 8. Today we are talking about the power to be delivered. The power to be delivered. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 23. We're going to read from 23 to 26. Matthew 8, from 26, 23 to 26. If you can get 27 on the screen, awesome. If not, no problem. Matthew chapter 8, from verse 23 to 26, 27. When you're there, please say amen. amen. And when he, he being Jesus, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. So Jesus entered the ship, and his disciples followed him. His disciples were with him. They did not board a ship that Jesus did not enter. They followed him in the same ship. Unlike one prophet we know that just entered a ship on his own and said, you know what, I'm not going to Nineveh, I'm going to Tashish. And that prophet was on his own. These disciples are not like that. They are following the master where the master says he's going. So, and when he was entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, that and behold is like all of a sudden. So you can be with Jesus and all of a sudden something can happen. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea. Now, the hurricane of the sea is worse than the one of the land. Because that is like, it can even be like a tsunami. The worst earthquake is the one that happens under the sea. Because it can throw water the height of a building onto land, and everybody will be swept away in the water. So, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, in so much that the ship was covered with the waves. It doesn't say the waves got into the ship. That's what it says. It says the ship was covered with the waves. It's not saying, oh, water entered the ship. That's not what it says. The ship was covered with the waves. The, the, the waves of the sea had taken over the ship. So it was like the ship was drowned. It was like submerged. It was covered in the waves. With the waves. Yet Jesus was sleeping. No surprise. The same thing happened when Jonah was sleeping. They had to go and wake up Jonah and say, ah, which, man of, which kind of man is this? Don't you see the tempest of the sea and you're sleeping? Jesus was sleeping like that. So this was a great tempest. And Jesus was asleep. 
that tells you he did not panic. The tempest is enough to wake you up. That is enough to wake up anybody. This one was at peace. So Jesus was asleep. But the disciples were awake. They could not sleep. There is the kind of tempest that will come into your life. The kind of storm that will come into your life. That will challenge your sleep. There's the kind of storm that will come that will make it hard for you to sleep because of worry and anxiety. Because as you're, as you're avoiding one wave, you're looking at the next wave of the storm that is coming. As you take your bucket and you take away water, more water is coming. More trouble. More trouble. Water can be a blessing, but in this scenario it's like a curse. So Jesus is asleep. Verse 25. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. The power to be delivered. Now, one thing I want us to know, many of us have the power to be delivered. But the power is asleep. You have the power to be delivered. And that power is asleep. And you need to wake that power. Because that power is asleep. You know, there are different degrees of sleep. There are some people you could just tap like this when they are asleep and they will wake up. Some people, you will tap them, they won't wake up. You have to shout, you have to scream, you have to shake them. They say, huh, 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 before they come out of their sleep. So the power to be delivered is available to you. And you have to make sure that that power is not sleeping. If the disciples did not wake up Jesus, the storm will continue. And Jesus will still be sleeping. Many of us have not woken up Jesus. And the storms are continuing. And the storms are raging with intense propensity. And Jesus is sleeping. The one that can deliver you is sleeping. Now, let's understand this. When I say Jesus is sleeping, come on, we know he is God. He neither slumbers nor sleep. He neither slumbers nor sleep. So when I say God is sleeping, I'm not talking about physical sleep. What I'm saying is that he's inactive in your situation. So the power to be delivered is inactive, is dormant in your situation. It's not that the power is not there. The power to calm the raging sea and save that boat was asleep. And many times we are going through crisis and life storm. And the power to be delivered is inactive. Is dormant. Is sleeping. The power, you see, the Holy Spirit is the person and epitome of power. And the Holy Spirit dwells in you. He's in you and with you. Make sure Holy Spirit is not sleeping in you. Make sure he's not sleeping. That's why the Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Because if you grip the Holy Spirit, it can become dormant. You say, oh, Heidi, I need to go and witness in Times Square. I'll say, nope. Heidi, can you go to Grand Central and witness? Nope. Heidi, can you do this? Nope. And then you'll become grieved. You won't talk to me again. You'll become dormant. You won't talk to me again. Then when there's a storm, I'll say, Holy Spirit! You say, ah, don't disturb my sleep. Don't disturb my sleep. So the one that could deliver the disciples because they said, get us not down, we perish. Because the storms of life want you to perish. He's a thief. John 10 verse 10. He says the thief comes to steal, kill, perish, and destroy, perish. So they had to wake up Jesus lest they perish. So the power to be delivered was in the box with them. 
Lesson number one. The fact that you have the power to be delivered does not mean the devil will not attack you. The power to be delivered can be in you, with you, like it was on the boat. That does not mean the devil will not attack you. The power to be delivered does not guarantee you immunity from attack. Do we get that? Yes. So now, you need to wake up that power. The Bible says, don't quench the Spirit's fire. If you quench the Spirit's fire, on a very cold day when you're looking for fire, you won't see fire. So they had to go to Jesus. He said, Master, you're sleeping. Wake up. Haven't you heard that Psalm, Psalm 68 verse 1? He said, let God arise. He said, he's sleeping. Nobody is sleeping. He neither slumbers nor sleep. But he said, let God arise and the enemy be scattered. Let God arise and the waves cease. But God is dormant. Because they've not done anything to move him. You want to move God? You want the power to be delivered, to be activated? Then you have to do certain things. One, you want to wake up Jesus. Repent. Repent. You want Jesus to stop that storm. You want him to wake up and stop the storm. Then you must have faith. Two faith. The power to be delivered. The one with the power is Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost. And he's inactive. It's like he's not moving. You say, oh God, where are you? God, where are you? Ah, God, where are you? See what is happening. You're saying, God, show up. If you don't show up, I'm toast. You have to repent. Because have faith. And then prayer. You must know how to pray. Even Jonah prayed from the belly of the fish. You must know how to pray. When you pray, say, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer. But not everybody can call upon him in the day of trouble. Why? Because he says, the prayer of the wicked is an abomination unto him. That's why we started out by saying, repent. Repent. Faith. And then prayer. And you know there are different degrees of sleep, like we said. Some people can just say, hello. And they just rise up from sleep. Some people you have to shake them. Shout. Before they wake up. So, if the power is deep asleep, you repent, you have faith, you pray, and the power hasn't woken up, that is the time to shake the power. Go into fasting. Go into fasting. Intensify your prayer. With fasting and say, Lord, arise! Wake up, arise! And as soon as he woke up, he calmed the storm. He defeated the enemy. He calmed the storm that was programmed to make them perish. He calmed the storm with a word. Now, there are a few things we also need. To understand. Maybe you are in the storm of life. Maybe you are in intense spiritual warfare. And it is like Jesus is asleep. There is something that is missing. There is something that you need urgently in the battle. And what you need urgently in the battle is supernatural intervention. Not so. Yes. You need supernatural intervention. That is what the disciples knew. That's why they woke up Jesus. Because they knew that their own natural intervention could not stop the storm. They knew that there was nothing they could do naturally as men to stop the storm. So the only one they knew that had supernatural power 
to intervene was Jesus Christ. And they said, except there is supernatural intervention, the waves of the sea will consume us. So in that battle that you're fighting, you need supernatural intervention. You cannot stop the waves by yourself. That is what God was telling the people in 2 Chronicles 20, 17 that we looked at. He says, you will not have to fight in this battle, but yet you will go against the enemy. Because I will be with you. So God gave them supernatural assistance against the enemy. Look, in the absence of supernatural intervention, you will be compelled to use natural means. And natural means are highly ineffectual in spiritual warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not natural. They are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So when there is no supernatural intervention, natural means cannot do the job. So it's even better to wait on the Lord and pray and fast and say, God, arise! Because the enemy wants you to fight him by natural means. Because he knows every time you fight him with natural weapons, he will overcome you. So it's even futile to fight the enemy with carnal weapons. It's better to wait on the Lord to arise. It's like me saying, I'm going to cast out this demon. And God says, oh, we'll cast out the demon tomorrow. I say, no, God, tomorrow I, I'm going to work tomorrow, so I want to cast it out today. And I stand there to cast it out in my own power. I will wish I waited. So we need supernatural intervention in this warfare. Because you don't even know where the waves are coming from. But there is something. There is something that affects the storm. There is something that controls the waters. Something. Once upon a time, there was a man, a righteous man. His name was Noah. God destroyed the whole world and he preserved Noah and his family. Not so. Mm -hmm. And then he sent a deluge, and there was water, and Noah's ark was on top of the water, and now everybody has been destroyed. God wants to do something. He says, I, I have to get rid of this water. Let us go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 8. Verse 1. Genesis 8, verse 1. If you're there, please say amen. amen. And God remembered Noah. And God remembered Noah. And every living thing. And all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind. Everybody say wind. wind. God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters are switched. God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters are switched. What caused the waters to recede? The wind. The wind. The wind. The wind. The wind. When God wanted to bring plague to Egypt, he sent a wind that brought all those vicious animals to torment them. And then when Pharaoh cried out for deliverance, he sent another wind to blow away the frogs to the sea. Not so. When God wanted to send the locusts against his people for their disobedience, he used a wind, Joel, in the book of, he used a wind to bring the locusts, his great army, and he used a wind to take them away when the people repented. So now, Jesus spoke to the wind in the boat. He said, please be still. Even Ezekiel in the valley of dry bone, he prophesied to the bones. The bones, there was a, large, a lot of noise and rattling and the bones came together. But there was no life. So now there is no life. What did God say to Ezekiel? He said, prophesy to the winds. That these bones will bring again. So now the storm ceased. What 
was the reaction of the disciples? Back to Matthew 8 as we close this message. Verse 26. And he said unto them, Why are ye fearful? Fearful, O ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. Because it was the wind, catch this, that was troubling the sea. It was the wind that was troubling the sea. So he rebuked the winds and the sea. And there was a great calm. You need Jesus to wake up today for you. So that every contrary wind, spirits are like wind. So that every contrary wind and the sea, marine kingdom, we stand still for you. Verse 27. But the men marveled. Listen. In verse 23, he says his disciples followed him. In verse 25, he says his disciples came to him. But in verse 27, he says the men marveled. Because the disciples were still thinking like mere men. They followed him. 23, say the disciples followed him. When the storm started, say the disciples came to him. And then when Jesus rebuked the seas, the wind and the seas, verse 27, the men marveled. That was near men. Saying, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. You see, it is risky to allow the power to be delivered to remain asleep in you. Because that is a power that you have been given that the winds and the sea cannot resist. So the winds and the sea will do everything to make sure that the power to be delivered within you is asleep. It is in the best interest of the kingdom of darkness to make sure that the Holy Ghost in you is sleeping. So they will do everything to make sure you walk in unforgiveness. They will do everything to make sure you don't repent. They will keep you in sin for as long as they can. They will do everything to make sure you don't believe. With all kinds of lying wonders. Why? So that you will not wake up Jesus in the boat. They will even tell you, don't disturb him, he's asleep. Don't disturb him. Shh. That's what they told blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus said, no. I will wake him up. He's walking on his way, but I will call him. And he shouted more. God has given you that power. He says, I've given you power to trample on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. He has given you that power. You have to make sure that power is not dormant. There are different kinds of power. We have electrical power that lights up all these things. But if we don't turn on the switch, the power is there. But so long as the switch is not turned on, it's sleeping. But as soon as you go to the wall and you do this, it's awake. And you need faith to wake in that power. The power that is in you is greater than the power that is in the world. The power that is in you is greater than any contrary wind or raging storm or raging sea. But you must know how to tap into that power. You must know how to activate that power and work with that power. You must know how not to grieve that power. Annoy that power. Many times we shut down the power. Everyone that is in Christ has that power. And that power can grow. 
Some people, their power has been sleeping for years. You know what it is to wake up a giant that has been sleeping for 12 years? <laughs> That's not going to be easy. It's like waking up a dead man. It's like waking up a dead man. And some of us will put our power to sleep for, for decades. Now is the time. The power is here. We are going to pray. As we close this message, let us pray. Let us pray. Just one prayer point. Just one prayer point as we close. Who's ready to pray? Rise up. Let us pray. One prayer point. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I repent for every time I have grieved you. Lord, you have given me power. Come alive! Come alive! Come alive! I need you in the battle! I need you for life storm! In the name of Jesus! Holy Ghost in me! Manifest yourself! Holy Spirit in me! Manifest yourself! Arise on my behalf! In the name of Jesus! I thank you, O oh God! In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated. Shout amen. amen. God is good.